Live and Let Die came out in 1973, 42 years ago, so that makes it officially the oldest film I've reviewed on my channel. It's the eighth Bond film in the Eon James Bond series, and it's the first one to star Roger Moore as James Bond. I'm going to be as objective as possible because I have a lot of nostalgia tied to Live and Let Die. It's a film I watched all the time when I was a kid. I just kept rewinding the videotape and just watching certain scenes. I'm going to try to push all that aside and review it as a film and how it holds up to today's standards. I'm going to start by talking about the Bond elements. You know how each James Bond film has like certain parts of about it that make it a Bond film. I'm going to talk about the elements that are in this one. First off, let's talk about the Bond girl. She's called Solitaire. She's this fortune teller who works for the main bad guy for the first half of the film anyway. I like her. She's like kind of like imprisoned by him. She's like being forced to tell all these things about his future and she's just pretty much working for the bad guy. And it's one of those classic, you know, like James Bond frees her. Now he, she has to go against the bad guy. It's a really cool little character thing that she has going. And I like the actress who plays it. She did a good job. And you can tell there's a lot of internal conflict inside of her like is this the right thing to do should I be doing this and it's a really cool little inside struggle she has going on. Let's talk about the villains of the film. The main villain is Dr. Kananga and granted compared to the other Bond villains he's nothing really special I mean he's just a guy who operates a bunch of drug rings and stuff like that but he works for the film. I mean what he what they had to go for in the film it worked. Let's talk about the Bond henchman. The main henchman I would argue is Teehee Johnson. He's the guy who has the mechanical arm He's cool, he's a bit sarcastic on side, you know, he's like doing all the bands with James Bond, like, yeah, Mr. Bond, crocodiles and all that stuff. And yeah, I thought it was pretty cool with the mechanical arm. He bends a gun in half. I mean, seriously, come on. You have Baron Samady, which a lot of people say is like a really iconic Bond henchman. And I can see why they say that, but really in the film, he doesn't have a lot to do. I mean, literally, like, he's got a few cameos throughout the film. He has one little showdown with James Bond, not really a showdown, but like one confrontation with James Bond. But apart from that, compared to what I read online about how people perceive him, it's just he's not really the big massive henchman people think he is. Then you have Whisper, who's probably the most useless henchman in Bond history. I mean, he, he literally just stands there and just, he whispers, do you want me to open it? Do you want me to open it? So yeah, he's uh, pretty useless. <laughs> Let's talk about Roger Moore in this film. This was his first film as James Bond, and I thought he did a good job in the film as well. I mean, he was funny, he was sarcastic, he could throw down when he had to throw down, he was a badass when he needed to be a badass, and I like how his humour was not like overdone like it was in later films, so I just thought Roger Moore's performance in this film was pretty good. A really good, strong debut as James Bond. One of the stronger ones, I think. One of the things I want to talk about is the whole voodoo element of this film. There's a lot of voodoo and cult stuff in this film, and I like it, personally. I think I like it for the reason why why some people don't like it is because it doesn't really feel like James Bond and it makes the film feel different and unique in my opinion. I think it gives its own tone and own flavour to the film with all this weird voodoo and sacrifice scenes going on. I like it, it works for the film and yeah it's not James Bond like like at all but it works for the film and they didn't do it in an overly cheesy way I didn't think. They did it in a way where I can believe that it's going on and I believe that James Bond has to get through that to get to the bad guys. The last part of my positive is that this film does have quite a few memorable sequences, at least it does for me anyway. You have the scene where James Bond is trapped on the island surrounded by the crocodiles and alligators. I mean, who doesn't remember that scene? I mean come on, running across the crocodiles and alligators backs to get off the island. That's just James Bond material right there. Then you have a speedboat chase through the Louisiana rivers, which I thought was pretty well done as well. But for me, by far the most memorable sequence in this film was the bush chase. Now, one thing I want to say about this bush chase is that I remember watching this as a kid and I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I even got a toy bus, the actual toy bus with the removable roof. That's how much I love the scene and I was there like on the carpet acting it out going yeah and just driving it all around. I mean, it had quite an effect on me as a kid. But granted, when I look back on it now, it's quite, um, what's the word, unexciting, I'll say that. I mean, if you've never seen this film and you watch it right now, you'll say that that particular scene's boring and it's not exciting at all. And I won't argue with you. It's just to me, it's got lots of nostalgia tied to it because I love that scene. The bus is going around, it drives under the bridge and it, the roof comes off and I, I had the toy, of course. And I'm just saying, it's, it doesn't really hold up as well. I'll get more into the holding up part later, but I like the scene. And everyone else I know just won't, but I like it. Now getting on to some of the negatives about this film, looking back at it now, there are some scenes which really don't hold up technically. Like there are parts of this film where there's some really choppy edits, like something will be happening, and then you hear like a crash off screen, and then someone turns around and something's happened, but you don't see it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, you know, kind of like that. But I'm not going to hold it against the film because, like I said, it came out 42 years ago. I mean, come on. They didn't obviously have all the best editing techniques back then, but I would have liked to have seen that bot fly through the guy's car. I'm just saying. And there is one part I will say. I'm not going to spoil it in case you haven't seen it, but there is a, a, a character dies and he dies in a very over-the-top and very cheesy way. And, and when you look at it, the special effects and all that stuff required for this death, and you watch it now, you're just like, what the hell is that? It's like something from Looney Tunes or something. But like I said, I was a kid when I watched this film, and I just did not care because things were on the screen, and I liked seeing things on the screen move. So to wrap this up, guys, I still really like Live and Let Die. Like I said, it's my third favourite Bond film of them all. And yeah, that's probably mainly because of nostalgia, but I watched some scenes today. I don't have it on Blu-ray or DVD yet, but I watched some scenes, and I still remember all the vibes that came off it when I watched it on the VHS when I was a kid. Yeah, some of the scenes don't hold up. Some of the editing's a bit choppy sometimes, and modern audiences who haven't seen it and watch it now will probably go, meh, <laughs> rubbish, but I still like it a lot. So objectively speaking, I'm going to give Live and Let Die a 4 out of 5. So have you seen Live and Let Die, and what did you think about it? I'm curious if anyone has like the same kind of nostalgia tied to it as I did, but whatever your thoughts are on Live and Let Die, tell me in the comments below, and if you like this stuff and you want to see more of my stuff, then be sure to subscribe to my channel because i got stuff coming to you guys all the time. And that means you, smart ass.